Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? I worked with this one guy who had a lengthy record. He had a system for getting released if he got caught. After committing a crime, if the police were in pursuit and he knew he was about to be cornered, he would act insane. His girl would play along with it telling the police that he was off his medication. The police would arrest him but then send him to a mental ward with papers instructing the ward to release to police once he was cleared. Once he was in the mental ward, he would cause a distraction that would make the person attending the desk with the file cabinet to leave said cabinet. He would then crawl to the file cabinet, look for his release to police papers, and then would literally eat the papers. When the psych evaluators decided that he was stable enough to be released, there would be no instructions to send him to the police, and he would be released to the general public. He did this about 10 times until police officers noticed him back on the streets. This stunt forced the state to change their procedure for detaining mentally unstable suspects. My favorite was the guy who stole a post office mailbox off the street, repainted it, and then put it next to the night deposit box at a bank, and hung an out of order sign on the deposit box. All the businesses came along and dropped off their deposits in the mailbox. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, MP3 players, beer etc., and throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes five hours, until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hopped to get his items. Once, he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later, he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. I'm not a cop, but I worked crime scene. This guy had attached GPS to the bottom of people's cars who owned houses. He wanted to rob. He did it to ensure they wouldn't be showing up while he was ransacking the place. I heard about one person that pulled a shoplifting scam on a large, popular, and well-known U.S. retail store. They walked in with some cheap nylon product to get one of those I walked in with this stickers they used to put on returning merchandise. The sticker easily peeled off, the product undamaged. They walked to the electronics department, grabbed an expensive box off the shelf, and went to customer service. They placed the sticker on the big box and asked if they could return the item without a receipt. Unfortunately, no, not without the original receipt. Dang it. And they walk out. Customer service even gave the doorman the thumbs up having just interacted with the customer. This took place before widespread inventory controls and cameras absolutely everywhere. Deleted. I remember an officer telling me about a BNE alarm he and his team responded to. No one was there to report the alarm. It must have been a security monitoring company that called. When police showed up, everything seemed normal. Most lights were off. And there was an employee still working. Explains he was there working late and must have set off an alarm. They almost believed him until he said a, uh, before saying the name of the company he worked for. After that it was downhill, but with a little more research he would have pretty much gotten away with it. There's one guy I recently dealt with who was on parole. I stopped him in my city after he was looking to buy drugs, usually people come from all over to buy drugs and then leave. I issue him a warning and let him go as it's pretty common and he sang like a bird regarding the people he was trying to buy from. Anyway, the next day, I got a call from his parole officer who says he was alerted the guy was pulled over and wanted to verify that it was his guy that I stopped. I'm a little confused at first but he goes on to say that the day before. He was scheduled to meet with him but he had an excuse and bailed. His excuse was that he was in the hospital. Well, when he spoke with him the following day, he was able to provide documentation that he had entered the hospital day one and had left day two. Well I had stopped him at 115 in the morning and after looking at the picture, it was 100% him. Turns out the guy had checked in then out of the hospital on day one, then in and out again on day two. He then rearranged half the paperwork to make it look like he was in the hospital overnight which would make my car stop of him appear like I mixed him up with someone else as well as give him a valid excuse to miss their meeting. Not sure what's gonna happen to that guy, but I thought it was pretty clever. Removed.
This was in the late, 90s early 00s. A guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans, registered for a bunch of 300-person freshman survey courses where he would never be missed, then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual I was young and dumb and in over my head sob story and got put on probation for a semester. So he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out and didn't care. He made something on the order of $150,000 in return for about $8,000 in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run, but in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. Working in a home improvement store when younger, this guy came in, went to the snow blowers, took one and went to the return desk, said he wanted to return it but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says okay I'll be back and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times, apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Most of them are really stupid so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jeweler's on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jeweler's was empty and he hid there. For two weeks, he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night. Massive headache for the police and the business. We turned up to see nothing there. Nothing on cameras. Thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall, had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking his sweet time, escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart, after all. Good effort though. Deleted. There's a golf course slash country club in my town that has a PGA tournament scheduled in the next couple years. They have a guy repeatedly breaking in overnight and just lounging around and eating food. All on camera. The club refuses to report it so they don't hurt their chances of the tournament coming. Worked at a jail. After getting off work, I watched an ex-inmate, homeless, being released. He walked over to a patrol car, looked me in the eye, and the elbowed the window in. He was walked back to the entrance and rebooked in. It was middle of January. He didn't want to get too cold. Edit, to the people talking about, can't break car windows. That's true. Also, depends on the car. The patrol car they used was specifically old model. Used more for the perimeter of the jail and less other patrol cars were in the shop. Those windows had been replaced so many times. I don't know if it's the same material or what. And for the ones asking for news links. Come on guys. You really think the news reports, small time things? Those aren't dramatic enough. I could probably find their charges and stuff and share. But I'm not gonna do that to this guy. He was a nice guy. Not a dick. I'm not gonna put him on blast just to prove anything to people for karma or anything along those lines. Deleted. A French thief who spent 10 years in prison became a comedian when he got out. One of his stories. Finds a building. Goes in. Chooses a floor and transforms the exit door into an extra apartment. Puts the apartment number. Fake lock. Welcome rug. Etc. Puts an iPhone for sale. The person comes to buy it. He opens the door in a shower robe and says give me one second. I'm just gonna count the money. And poof. He's gone from the exit stairs. A friend of my brother moved to Israel where for a period of time it was slash as acceptable to drive with an American driver's license. He was pulled over for speeding. And when asked for his license, gave the officer his Costco card. Costco is a membership-based retail warehouse in the US and a few other countries. The exchange apparently went something like this. Officer, Costco? What is Costco? Friend, it's the state I'm from. Officer, that sounds made up. Friend, there are lots of states you probably haven't heard of. 
Have you heard of Arkansas? How about Idaho? Officer, I guess not. Friend, well, I'm from the small state of Costco. The officer didn't have a response and wound up writing the ticket to someone with a Costco driver's license. Friend framed the ticket and still has it hanging on his wall. One guy would print barcodes, bring them into Home Depot and stick them on merchandise in the $100 range. When scanned the items came up around the $10 range. Putting random barcodes on things isn't really illegal and super hard to notice. Guy 2 would come in an hour later and buy the underpriced stuff. Complete plausible deniability. They would then sell the stuff on eBay. Only reason they got caught is because the guy with the barcode printer slash software cut the second guy out of the operation so Guy 2 stole a bunch of barcodes, put them on the merchandise and paid for it immediately afterwards. He then proceeded to rat on the first guy and spilled the beans they had been doing this on a weekly basis for over four years, because we could only pin the one case on him. The burglary was dropped down to a pretty theft and he walked away with a few days in county and a small fine. Dude probably took Home Depot for tens of thousands over the years. Probably someone who committed a crime I never solved. With that being said I had a guy use a sledgehammer to smash his way through a wall at a Best Buy and steal a bunch of phones and cameras. He was smart enough to wear gloves and a face mask and not touch anything he didn't have to. Alarms didn't go off until he exited out the back door, which the alarm company gets after a minute or two and takes them like three-fourths minutes to call into us, giving him a good five-minute head start so he was probably a few miles away before we got dispatched to it. He clearly scoped out the area before doing his deed too. Smart dude. Edit. So part of the building was built into a hill. So the hole was on the back side of the building along the grade line but when you're inside the building it was about eight feet up. So it was easier for him to leave out a door. Also the wall section where he broke through was hollow cement block. The portion of the wall below that was poured concrete. Not a police officer. But was an RA in college. My university owned all the houses adjacent to campus. These were in like dorms. With our ace and the same rules, which included a very strict no alcohol policy. It was a privilege to live in the houses. And priority was given to upperclassmen who were more likely to bend that